Went to Rockefeller was probably the most improbable, successful politician in Arkansas history and, and maybe the national history. He was reared in New York as part of, of course, the, the wealthy Rockefeller clan. He was the youngest and uh, was a playboy. All the others went off into banking and what have you and had distinguished careers. And Winthrop was, uh, went off to the army and was uh, sort of a playboy. He's really a very fascinating and interesting guy, very sensitive in many areas, but very strong, highly competitive. You know, he was a maverick. He left Yale and he didn't do all the things the brothers did. Uh, you know, he went in the service for six years and is in the Fort Benning Infantry Hall of Fame and you know, he was, uh, worked in the oil fields. But then I think his war buddies, you know, Frank Newell and others, uh, talked him to come down here and take a look at Arkansas. And when he came, he, he saw and he was impressed and then he, he saw that he could make a difference and uh, that's, that's just exactly what he did. Orville Faubus had appointed him early on to the Industrial Development Commission and he was quite instrumental in in bringing industry and jobs to Arkansas, so he was a fairly popular figure in Arkansas. And he had fallen out with Orville Faubus over 1957. He was a passionate apostle of, of racial equality and justice, and he was deeply offended by what Orville Faubus did in calling out the National Guard in 1957 to prevent integration. Uh, about the situation in Little Rock, you're a man with considerable influence in Arkansas, in addition to being head of the state's Industrial Development Commission. You're also a man with a long-standing interest in the National Urban League. What's your reaction to the current difficulties in Little Rock? Well, Ed, <clears throat> I regard the events of the past month as tragic. I respect the people of Arkansas, and I have faith in their goodwill, and their moderation. I firmly believe that the spirit of goodwill and moderation is beginning to assert itself and Arkansas will move forward again. So he was doing things, all of which were uh, attracting our attention. And then as he got uh, around 1960, he became really involved in, in this uh, two-party system. Actually, he looked at the state and felt that it and other southern states were really being held back by not having a competitive two-party system. Uh, but Arkansas basically was still kind of a slumbering state, I guess is the way to put it trying to recover from the war and being basically an agricultural state. But I think you'd have to define the state in, in that case just simply as a one-party democratic state. Uh, Democrats controlled everything. So we didn't consider him, though on the Democratic side, as a political threat. Uh, he was warned by Democrats and Republicans alike that this would be difficult to really build a genuine two-party system, but he was convinced this was a way for Arkansas to, to have a viable political system. He really went after it, not with a vengeance. He went after it in a very sensible way, trying to uh, build the Republican Party. But, you know, he, he was not having much success until he ran for governor himself. Well, Harry Ashmore was editor of the Arkansas Gazette and uh, a famous liberal on the national scene. When Harry Ashmore became convinced that Wynn really wanted to be governor, he tried to persuade him to run as a Democrat. And he pointed out to him it'd be a much easier road to the governorship if he chose to do it that way. And from Ashmore's point of view, it would help purify the Democratic Party and get it out of the hands of the machine people. Wynn was adamantly opposed to that. His objective was to establish a two-party system in Arkansas and develop a two-party system throughout the South. He had the falling out with the administration and eventually left that administration and ran for governor in 1964 for the first time against Orville Faubus and was defeated in that race. That was Orville Faubus was elected to his last term. He, from the very beginning, did not expect to win the first time. And I was kind of happy that that came to the outcome. I was hopeful we'd win. And uh, I think we did a little bit better probably than the poll numbers indicate, but uh, he lost and that did not uh, demoralize him at all. He was immediately ready to proceed. On election night in 1964, they were still counting the votes, although it was obvious that Mr. Rockefeller had fallen a bit short. He announced on election night, I'll run again in two years. He never stopped running. Rockefeller immediately announced he was running again, and he ran in 1966. Uh, Faubus did not run for a seventh term. There was a sizable field of candidates that year. Frank Holt, a dignified justice of the Arkansas Supreme Court, was a candidate. Uh, justice Jim Johnson, he also was a justice of the Arkansas Supreme Court and was an ardent and, and uh, an unreconstructed uh, segregationist. 
And in the Democratic primary, Justice Jim actually prevailed over a field of about uh, five or six candidates. Brooks Hayes, a former congressman, was in that race. But he defeated Frank Holt in a runoff and entered the general election against uh, Winthrop Rockefeller. It's characteristic of one possessed of this malady to claim credit for any event which might suit his fantasy. In 1966, Jim Johnson is one of a number of Democrats vying for the Democratic nomination, and they range the ideological spectrum from liberal to arts conservative. And Jim Johnson's at the far end of the spectrum. He had made a name for himself in a town called Hoxie, where he fought integration. He was the founder of the White Citizens Council, and he had served on the Arkansas Supreme Court, which is where his nickname, Justice Jim, came from. While Rockefeller probably could have beaten Faubus in 66, Johnson running meant that Rockefeller presented even more of a change from the past and the willingness to move forward. Rockefeller was able to recruit black support and hold on to a substantial number of, of white folks. They were not going to sit by and see Justice Jim Johnson elected governor of the state without their opposition. And they made it happen. They gave Rockefeller the necessary majority in both 66 and 68. Winthrop Rockefeller represented new attitudes, new ideas, fresh approaches. Instead of business as usual, it was business-like. Mr. Rockefeller looked at state government and was appalled at what he saw, not just the atrophy, but at its inability to respond very quickly, and its inability to adapt to changing times. It didn't function very well. And Winthrop Rockefeller paved the way, I think, so he, he sort of cleared the air. He broke the hold of the Faubus machine that had developed in 12 years. And Rockefeller really paved the way for a Dale Bumpers and a David Pryor and a Bill Clinton. I don't know if we could have made it had he not been our governor uh, preceding our respective administrations. But uh, he did it. Uh, he brought in a new era of racial understanding and race relations. He really was a, an extremely progressive man. And not only that, he had the heart for it, and um, he had the resources for it, of course, and he used them wisely. He's going to go down as one of our, as one of the, the bright lights in Arkansas history. We had some pretty dim moments back there, some pretty dark times, and Rockefeller turned on that light. So um, I, I applaud him for that, and I'm very thankful that he was here.